Well, tense meetings at the White House, billions of dollars and tens of thousands of jobs on the line. Bailing out GM and Chrysler was a drama of its own that played out behind closed doors. The man at the center of it all, Steve Ratner, dubbed the car czar by the media. He joins us now. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, your latest book My about all book. of this, your only book, <laughs> uh, Overhaul. Uh, y you turned this very quickly. You were at the center of the drama in the White House. And reading through this, you talk about the tense situation at the White House when it came to saving GM and Chrysler. You even say at one point that Rahm Emanuel, the president's chief of staff, said, why even save GM? Rahm was, I think, being a bit provocative. There was never really any serious doubt about what to do with GM. GM had to be saved. But when it comes to Chrysler, there was doubt. I mean, you talk about a vote that was split four to four. You didn't know which way you were going to go. Larry Summers cast a deciding vote when it comes to Chrysler, right? It was a really tough decision. In a more normal economic environment, I think we all would have voted to let Chrysler go. But in March of 2009, when the economy was in free fall, the idea of 300,000 jobs disappearing in a flash, if they could be saved in a viable way, led us to uh, go the other way. You talk about President Obama persisting to do, quote, the right thing rather than the expedient thing. And you also say in here that if you had to wait for Congress to approve these bailouts, we would have seen uh, GM and Chrysler fall into uncontrolled bankruptcy. I was... Uh I shouldn't say astonished, but I, was, I felt incredibly great about the president's uh, emphasis on doing the right thing, mm -hmm. on fundamentally restructuring these companies, not just shoveling some money into them as others might have done. We would never subject it to the slightest bit of political pressure to, f to favor the UAW or to favor some district where there was a plant that belonged to an important congressman. But there was polling consideration in these meetings, right? How would the American public take a bailout? Yes, and, and the polls said the American public hated the idea of an auto bailout. And yet the president went ahead anyway because he knew that the polls aren't, first of all, are not the way you should govern. Mm -hmm. And secondly, don't always really mean what you think. If we had let these companies go, I would predict the polls a week later would have been, how could you have let these companies go? Congress is a different matter. Congress, I always had doubts about. And getting down there, I saw them in their, all their dysfunctional splendor. And uh, what I came away with was exactly what you said, that if we had needed money from Congress, if there hadn't been TARP, which I know is an incredibly controversial subject, mm -hmm at least one of these companies would have surely ended up liquidating. One story that a lot of people don't know but that you, that you recount is the fact that there was a point in time when Chrysler could have been sold to the U.S. government for one dollar. Yes. It was taken as a joke at the time that the call came in? It, this was during the uh, Bush period in December of 08. The Chrysler was bankrupt. It had no equity value. So in a sense, the owners of Chrysler, which was the private equity firm Cerberus, offered to give it to the government. But of course, it would have come with all this debt. The government didn't want to own an auto company, to say the least. When you talked in the Oval Office with the president, with Larry Summers, and you discussed this, I mean, how much was it about saving Detroit, which truly had a 25 percent unemployment rate at this point in time? It wasn't about Detroit per se, because most of these jobs are elsewhere in Michigan or in Indiana, which is the second biggest auto state. It was about saving the industrial Midwest, that if we had let GM and Chrysler both go, that would have been a million jobs instantly vaporizing. No question. Most of them, no question. Most of them in the Midwest. And it would have been the economic equivalent of an atomic bomb on the Midwest. It would have been the economic equivalent of Lehman Brothers in a different way going down. And so, again, we, the president was, comp was absolutely determined that we were not going to put money in these companies that we would not get back or that we didn't have a good chance of getting back. The money had to be in the context of a fundamental restructuring. What about the six months overseeing um, the restructuring, the bailout, call it what you will? W what were the bad decisions that you think were made either by the administration or maybe by, by yourself at the get-go? What were decisions you look back on and say might have done that differently now? Honestly, I think we pretty much got it right. Uh, there's not a lot I would do differently. With more time, under less of a crisis atmosphere, I might have uh, recommended that we get more sacrifices from all the stakeholders, not just the unions, but the creditors, the suppliers, from everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we did get significant sacrifices. The companies are viable. They are competitive. And they're making...